Look what we're making today. White Zinfandel from California. A wine kit. Today, I got something special for you today. We're going to show you how to make wine out of a kit that anybody can do it. All the additives are in here for you. I'm going to unbox this thing and show you what's inside. This box here will make five to six gallons of wine. That's like 25 to 30 bottles of wine. Look at this white Zinfandel wine. I tell you, it's gonna be a beautiful color. Now these wine kits come in all kinds of flavors and I've turned to the professionals to give us some of the best ones to make. All right, we're in Bailey's in York, Pennsylvania. I live real close to here. We have everything from uh, Chardonnay to a pink Moscato, Trinity Red from Spain. We have uh, grapes from Chile, so it's we cover a pretty good selection here. You said you got a place right right over here, right? Yes, yeah, Sony Run Brew House. We make all our, our beer in house. Make sure you're supporting your local brew supply store. But look here, you even got all kinds of juices. Now these don't come with the supplies normally, so you got to buy them additive separate. So besides some of the uh, everything that's included in this box, it says you're going to need some extra. So I'm just going to read it off the box. You need an eight U.S. gallon bucket for a fermentation bucket, a bunge and airlock. You need a hydrometer, a siphon to rack your wine to get it into a carboy. You need a test jar, a thermometer, large mixing spoon, and that's it. And remember, I'm going to put links to all this stuff in the description of how to use this kit wine, which is going to be way easier for some of you beginners that want to see if you like the hobby first. So let's get this box opened up and see what is actually included in here. There we go. You got obviously some juice here. Classic white Zinfandel Reserve. That's some of the juice. It looks like we got a couple different packs of that. Here's all our additives. Oh, bentonite. That's my favorite filtering agent. I love that. The only thing left is another bag of juice, which is what we want. So let's go through. We're going to follow these instructions very carefully because I just want to show you how easy this is. And thanks to Homebrew Ohio, a lot of the links that I pr provide in my Amazon links go to them to support them. They're a great company. Um, there's all kinds of different wines, like I said, that you can make. Some are more expensive than the others, and that is because it more has more juice to water ratio. Some actually have oak flavoring in them, and then some actually have the grape skins included, which again, that's going to give you a full body wine. The higher the price, most likely the better the quality. I know somebody that's made this and they said it's excellent. My first time making this White's Infantel, so I can't wait to try it either. Let's get started. So we're getting ready. Remember, you got to sanitize your equipment. If you're new to this hobby, it's a must. I use star sand and what I'm going to do is add a half ounce to two and a half gallons of water. I'm not going to go into the entire process, but just know I got a whole separate video of how to do this. So let's get our equipment sanitized here. The first thing I like to do, and you'll see me use this, is I want to get a squirt bottle filled up. This will come in handy each day as we stir some of this wine up. So I'm going to get that going. I've got my stir pad. I'm going to put that in, our airlock, and our bunge. And this is what we'll use to measure our specific gravity. you got to have a hydrometer. You want to see what your ABV alcohol by volume is going to come out to. So one of the first things it says is you get your primary fermentation bucket and you grab the bentonite package. And we're just going to dump this in here. This is a little diff bit different the way I do it when I'm making my fruit wine. But again, we're just going to follow the instructions. Then it says to add eight cups of hot water. And then we're going to stir that bentonite in. Let's see if I can get an overhead shot here. You can see the bentonite at the bottom of the bucket. You're just going to stir this in, break it in. We're going to stir this every now and then. So you're going to have a little bit of clumps, but just do the best you can to break it up at this point. 
That's what this bentonite is going to do is draw some of that, the particles out of your wine and bring it to the bottom of your bucket. So when you rack this, it's going to make it clear. That's it. That looks pretty good for right now. Now step two is you take the larger bag and you just dump it in our bucket here. So let me see. This is where I put this in the sink because I've had mishaps before. There we go. I got her opened up. Oh my goodness, if you could smell this. But we're just gonna add this large bag of juice in here. Oh man, this is, smells amazing. This is gonna make a five to six gallon. Now what it says, it says to fill this bag up to rinse it. So I'm gonna put some water in here because we want all of that juice. Now, a lot of this, there's no exact science at this point. When we check our ABV, alcohol by volume, that's where we're going to get this to exactly the level we want. There we go. So now some of these kits come with oak chips. If you like that flavor, I don't care for oak flavor or wood flavor in my wines, but that's what it would stay to do here in the next step. Now what it's saying is to fill your bucket up to the six gallon level. For me, that's going to be pretty close up to the top, up to this rim here. And then we're going to check the specific gravity, the starting specific gravity. So let me get water added. I thought I'd just rinse this out. Make sure I get all that juice. I'll just use my faucet to top it off here. It says to make sure you're using good, clean drinking water. So whatever you're drinking, if you're drinking out of your faucet or tap water, that's just fine thought as I'm adding this water, I'll try and stir some of that bentonite in. So I filled my bucket here to about the five and a half gallon mark because I might want a bolder white Zinfandel. So what we have here is the hydrometer. I'll get close ups on this, but we have a potential alcohol level. And I usually for a wine, I want to get it somewhere maybe between 10 and 15. Uh, you know, not much less than 10. But I just want to see where it's at before I fill this all the way up to the six gallon. And then it's, I'm less than 10%. So I just want to double check. All right, the kid is right on. It's got a potential right now of 25%. Obviously that's way too high. So we're going to add the water to the six gallon level. So we got it to about that rim and that's probably close to six gallons. So I'm just going to give this another stir, get some of the water that might be laying on the top mixed in with the juice. But one thing that's so nice about these kits, if you watch my other videos, I'm not mixing any sugar water or any of that. That's already in here. So again, they make it easy on these wine kits that anybody can do it. All right, it's still right around 19%. So I'm gonna add a little more water. We may have to go up here pretty close to the top probably should have had a bigger bucket. So you can see I got my hydrometer floated in here and I'll show you a close up, but we're right around 11 and a half to 12%. That's where I like it. So the next step is, we're, I think we're on step four. You see how easy this is going? Usually if you see me make fruit wine, I'll put Camden tablets in this and you won't put the yeast in for 24 hours. But again, we're dealing with juice. So this has been prepared for us. So we don't need them Camden tablets and we can just put the yeast right in. It's just sprinkle on the top. That's how easy it is. This will turn into wine very shortly. Oh, it smells so incredible. So we're gonna get the, the lid on here and the airlock. And then I'm gonna come back in about 24 hours and show you what we want to do next. Now, I think this is over the top here. You remember I showed you the big juice thing here, but they actually, once we rack this into our carboy, we're going to have some headspace. They give you extra juice to top it off. That right there just goes to show you how far ahead they thought on this. They give you topping juice. This is where the squirt bottle comes in handy. Anything you can't get to on the lid. You want to do both sides. Let that on there for about a minute and then we'll put it on. Same thing with the airlock. I've had that sanitized, so we're good to go with that. So there we go. Flip this over, get it on here. 
And if you have this kind of airlock, you want to fill it up about halfway. Hopefully you can see that. It's about halfway. Put this on here. And what we're going to do is come back in about 24 hours and I'll show you the next step. This, hopefully we're gonna see bubbling in 24 to 48 hours. Now, Wine Experts also has in the beginning of the first quarter of the year, they come out with more limited edition kits. And everything I read about those is you can't make a bad batch of wine with these kits. So if you wanna start out, this is the way that you can try and get into the hobby before you jump to some of my fruit wines which are excellent by the way too. It's been 24 hours and I wanted to show you what I did here. Remember I said that bucket was a little bit too small, really should have had an eight gallon. I separated about a gallon of wine into this other bucket I have and use. Now this is not in the instructions, but I'm a professional. Your wine needs oxygen in the primary fermentation stage. You can see it already started to bubble here, but I like to stir it because adding oxygen in these first five days is going to make this yeast bloom. So we're not gonna see much foam yet, but we will in a few days. So I've got my lid off here. You can see how the top is like that. That's the yeast working, that's what we want. So I'm just gonna stir this for the next five days. And if you could smell this, it smells incredible right now. And we're introducing oxygen. Now the directions stay to let it alone for 14 days. But for the first five to seven days, I'm gonna stir this because I wanna make sure oxygen is getting in here. I got a whole oxygen video. Make sure you watch that because it's important that you know when to add oxygen and when not to. So that's it, we stirred it. We're just gonna let it sit for another 24 hours and I won't bore you with all this. There we go, remember, I got this paddle sanitized. This one looks just like the other one. Give it a gentle stir and put the lid back on. This airlock has really slowed down and we're at day 14 according to the instructions. So the next thing it says is to test your specific gravity because we want to make sure all that sugar was converted to alcohol. So I'm just going to take this lid and set it aside. And I got my sanitized hydrometer here. We're just going to drop it down. There is a specific gravity on this side and it's right in here. Hopefully you can see that. If not, I'll get a close up but we're hoping it should drop down to this 1.0. That way we know when we started this wine and we had an 11 and a half to 12% ABV, if we get to 1.0, that's what the ABV will be, 11.5 to 12%. I'm looking at this and it's really close to the 1.0. So that's what we're trying to get to. We're ready to get this rack. I'm gonna start by racking this smaller one. So. That's what the instructions say, rack into your carboys. I don't, again, like big carboys. So I'm racking this into two smaller three gallon carboys because they're just easier to manage. So we got our sanitized hose. I'm gonna put it down in one of my carboys here. You wanna get that hose down in there as much as you can. Then we're just gonna start this siphon. We don't wanna get anything that's on the bottom, which could be dead yeast or sediment. Wasting wine in this stage is okay. There we go. It's going down into our three gallon carboy. I'll just sit this there. So there you can see I got the hose going down in. This is the one gallon batch. So we'll probably come up to about a third of this. Then we'll get the big one and get it into that secondary. If you watch my last video, I'm making all precautions. I got these sitting in a plastic bin in case of any mishaps because this is the first time I'm using these two new carboys that I got. Now I'm gonna slowly tilt this bucket a little bit because I wanna get as much juice out as I can. I don't know if you can see in this bottom of this bucket here, but do you see all that sediment in there? You don't wanna get that in when you're racking your wine. So. We're wasting not much here, maybe a half a glass of wine. So we got the one gallon batch. Now we got the big bucket. 
and I'm just gonna start the siphon on this and we're putting in where I put that one gallon batch of wine. So we're going down there and I'm going to stop this when it gets to about two inches from the top. And you'll see what I mean as we get done here. This is fun, isn't it? We're making homemade wine from a kit. It doesn't get any easier than this. You just follow them directions and you'll be a successful winemaker. Then when you get that mastered, check out all my fruit videos because we do all kinds of fruit wines made from real fruit. So you can see it coming up the top here. I wanna stop the siphon when I see it get up so far and then I can top it off regular. So there we go. Now we'll just put the rest in this other one. So the next step it says now is when you add your potassium sorbate. Again, we're on day 14 of making this wine. You can see after I racked, I just temporarily put these airlocks on there. I'm just gonna take these out. And what it says to do is you just pour this into your container. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna split this evenly between my two, three gallon carboys here. And again, all we're doing is simply following the directions that this kit came with. You can see the gas coming out of there, right? So after we do that, now it's, it says you need to degas your wine. You can see some of that gas coming out. I got my sanitized paddle here. And again, I got this in a container in case of any mishaps like last time. But we're just going to stir this for, it says 10 minutes. I don't know if you need to do it that much. But this, you can see all the bubbles coming out here, which you don't want in your wine. So it says to reverse directions. And we'll just do this for the next 10 minutes to each one of these. So after degassing your wine, it says to use this other container here. It's good. Again, we're just following the directions on this. We're just going to open these back up and we'll put half in one and half in the other. There we go. We'll get our airlocks back on, but I always like to sanitize the corks because again, sanitizer, you've got to sanitize in this hobby. I'm gonna put these down uh, on the floor over there in my container in case, again, any mishaps, you wanna just be prepared. So it says to come back in 24 hours and then we're gonna add something else and then we're gonna let it all settle down. You're gonna be amazed how crystal clear this is gonna get in 24 hours. See you then. Now, one thing that's fun about the winemaking hobby is don't be afraid to test your wine at different stages here. I had a little bit extra in my fermentation bucket and here it is, the white Zinfandel. The color is incredible. I can't wait to see it once it clears out, but let's just taste it. Wow, I can tell you, that is gonna be excellent. Now remember, when we got that specific gravity down to 1.0, it should be pretty dry wine. It is fairly dry, but it's got some sweetness to it. When we get to the sweetening stage, we may not need to back sweeten. It's not recommended in the instructions. You just, when it racks and you're ready to bottle it, no sweetener needed. And maybe it's not going to need it. All right, look at this. It's been 24 hours since we added that chemical. And now I'm going to add the second according to the instructions. I kind of wanted to show you the color here with the light shining through, but do you see all that sediment at the bottom? I'm so impressed after just 24 hours. So now we're on day 15. It says to add your extra juice. This wine kit thought of everything. We've got extra juice to add if we were not up to the proper level, but I feel like we're at a very good spot here. Now, as we rack this, if I do an additional racking, this doesn't get clear like I want. You could see from that sediment, we're going to have to add juice at that point. So I'm gonna save that for later. But the next step is, it says you take this chitosan, which hopefully, again, I'm saying this right. Now's the time you add your top off juice and we add this. Remember, we added the other element yesterday. Did a little bit of research on this. I think I'm gonna do a whole video because 
I can't believe how it pulled out just on the very first. It's a two-part additive, but the way I understand it comes out of quartz rock. So bentonite, same thing. It's clay-based, but I'm going to do a whole video on this two-part stuff because I've been impressed with it. But let's just get into adding this to this wine kit. So I'm just going to snip this off. And I'm going to add half to each one of these. And hopefully not make too much of a mess again. I probably should use a funnel. And then you just want to stir this in again. I got my sanitized, I already sanitized my paddle here. And we're just going to stir that in and everything that's down below. We're getting a little full here. I might take a little bit of that out. Now it says for the next, I think it said two weeks to four weeks, we're just going to let these things pull all of the sediment out and take it to the bottom. So we'll put this airlock on and get these to a dark basement. So I decided not to take it out because I like where the level is. So we're just going to sanitize these airlocks again and we're just going to sit them on top. You don't want light hitting this. That's the key. And don't miss part two. We're going to rack this and get it bottled and taste tested. I can't wait to show you this because that's what we're trying to get to. Again, these wine kits, I've got links to all of them, all the good ones in the description. This brand here, Wine Expert, is a great one to start with. Try it out. It takes all the thinking out of winemaking. It gives you everything you need and then some. It's gonna be a great wine. White Zinfandel. Oh, oh, down a red dirt path, covering their tracks, strangers in the light of day. Can't fight, it can't stop, and if they get caught, it's gonna.